Hello everyone, it's George and welcome back to Call of Dragons, a dedicated free-to-play player who played this game for more than 500 days. I'm excited to share some insider tips and tricks with you. Stick around and let's dive in. Today I'm giving you an amazing news regarding Call of Dragons and especially if you are archer player like me, it doesn't really matter, uh, free to play player, pay to win player, tier 4 or tier 5, you will love the news which is coming out for the future of Call of Dragons, right? Uh, the main and most important topic on for this video will be about archers and how archers are coming back to the prime, right? Uh, what what would be the best news for archers? That's a great question. Well, I think best news for the archers would be to have same range as mage players, which is, well, epic. Last season, everybody remembers, I was saying that uh, at first when Long Range Warfare came out, I, I told everybody I don't care that archers are having less attack. If it means that we are having same range, we are we are rocking, right? At first, people thought that that minus physical percentage, like 15%, was a lot uh, in terms of archers long-range warfare, and they just stood still and waited how the meta would shift, right? From the day one, I, I enjoyed my gameplay playing with archers so with long-range warfare, and suddenly, in a couple of months, every single archer player became archer player, and also people were just spamming with archers, especially tier 5 players, right? Uh, it was so hard for mages to exist during PvP that uh, even mage players started to move to archers to have a better and fun gameplay in Call of Dragons, right? Uh, that's why this season, in Season of Stripe, because of the new feature of mystery um, skills, we don't have long-range warfare. But, as you can see, we are already. I am already close to... Uh, next KVK, which I think will be about Season of Stripe uh, Part 2. And I already have, and I guess everybody should already know that Long Range Warfare is coming back to town. Which means seasonal talents are coming back to town with a different type and different idea. Um, there is like a lot of different choices on the trees. I think you remember, guys, how the seasonal talents was looking like. Like, oh, you had to make some decisions, but right now... Uh, from the next season, the decisions will be even harder, right? But there is one small uh, addition to long-range warfare, which is, I think, there is uh, not 15% reduction of physical attack, but 20%. And honestly, I will say it again, I don't care how much of they are going to reduce. Of course, if they're going to reduce 65%, it will be horrible, but... 15% to 20%, I guess 5% difference, I will be still choosing my uh, archers for the gameplay, which simply because I think um, archers with the same range as mages should be the great, great addition, right? Um, it, like, simply, I, I actually thought that long-range warfare would come back at some point in the game, but I was not really expecting that it would happen so fast, right? Uh, that's why I think it would be a correct move from the archer players or the players who are wanting to play with archers. Uh, that's the best opportunity to hop into the hype train and start playing with archers, right? Uh, 20, like 11 days are left for my future KVK and I think I already have an idea how I'm going to perform in future seasons because archers with and without long-range warfare is totally different topic in my opinion and the gameplay and the PvP will change hugely, right? So, in order for us to prepare ourselves uh, for the best, right? And I have experience playing without long-range warfare way, way before with long-range warfare, and right now uh, we can see the change. I kinda have enough experience to speak about this stuff, right? Um, as always, I think uh, having multiple Archer Legions would be amazing. Um, honestly, that's that was the main idea, right? Having three or four or even five legions together, standing and hitting with normal attacks, because when long range came out, the normal attack playstyle was popular um, in terms of archers. So, like hero pairs such as Thindron and Fragar, which has normal attack crit rate, um, hero pair, and new addition, which is amazing, the, one of the best, not one of the best, the best archer hero pair, which is Magroth and Zayda, is about normal attacks, right? 
and healing. I hope I will get Magrod from the Wheel of Destiny. I really, really do. But yeah, we will see. So hero pairs like this will be really, really popular. And of course, don't forget uh, when long range warfare cam comes out, Hertz says one is still there, which means more ranged units you're gonna have around battlefield, more attack you are going to have. So that's why being Wilderberg is another important step because you are going to have one more um, marksman hero pair uh, which will giving buff to each other and Hertz's one had one one legion one ranged legion was giving 1.5 percent attack bonus and well if you had five you're gonna um, understand how much it will increase it kind of deducts a little bit of the long range warfare point like attack deduction right so more archer hero pairs you're gonna have on the field better and more damage you are going to deal with long range warfare that was my main gameplay even as a free to play player and my maximum ever in call of dragons was 7 million merits right so wilderberg should be the choice for archer players because you are going to have one additional ranged archer unit um, because you have to make a decision either you are playing with mages or archers that's the decision in season of stripe part two right um so i seen Thingrion and Freygar, like Magrot and Zayda, number one choice. Syndrion and Freygar, number two choice. Uh, Craig and Thea can be totally fine um, until we're gonna see um, flying good hero, which gonna be applied for uh, Wyverns, and that's why Wyverns are coming to the town, because we're gonna have additional hero pair. And of course, Nico and Kinara, or maybe you are running Hosk and Kinara. Uh, so we like most two like two most important tips we already said uh, play with multiple hero pairs and second one is Wilderberg should be the choice uh, if you want to uh, use uh, archers with long range warfare and Hertes one talent tree because Hertes one talent tree gives additional attack bonus per ranged units and uh, honestly when I saw the seasonal talents. Um, like you either playing with archers or you either playing with mages that's the biggest decision you have to make uh, so in terms of like power and like tier which archer hero pairs will be the best uh, with long range warfare there is one like if we're gonna say top three i think top one will be uh, Magrot and Zaida, any hero pair which is good with normal attack will be great, especially Archer, right? Magrot and Zaida will be amazing, uh, more normal attack damage, more safe spots, more healing, you're gonna survive way, way more uh, whenever you have high range like mages, right? And plus you're gonna have healing plus amazing amount of uh, normal attack damage, so I think Magrot and Zaida will be tier 1 choice. Uh, second one, second tier, I think, should be Awakened Syndron and Freygar, not like 5111. Awakened Syndron and Freygar should be tier 2. And the tier 3, I think, like, Craig and Thea can be, like, unexpected visitor there, because I was getting 25-20k merits per uh, Craig, Craig and Thea fighting with Long Range Warfare, but of course, uh, Nico and Kinara is still there, uh, Hosk and Kinara is still there, so top 3 spot is kinda open, uh, which means uh, like more heroes you're gonna have in general around the battlefield, I think it will be more and more suitable for a uh, long range warfare gameplay, right? Because uh, Hertz says 1 with Long Range Warfare was the perfect combination for Archer PvP, and I think uh, it will continue like that and I think mages are going to have a lot of struggle uh, from the part 2 of the season of Stripe, right? Uh, in terms of artifacts, which artifacts will be great to uh, prepare maybe in, in the future uh, season, I think there is like a couple of ob obvious choices. I think if you will get Guile of the Book Crossbow um, and you're gonna have Magrot and Zaida with Long Range Warfare and Hertes 1, I think you are going to deal huge, huge amount of damage. Uh, well, it deals damage to three nearby legions plus the HP Bypass, which is great for normal attack healer, uh, which Magrot and Zaida is, right? So I think Guile of the Crossbow uh, should be the tier 1 choice in terms of artifacts for archers. And of course, there is a couple of like uh, artifacts which will be amazing simply because Shinjon and Freygar will be great. I think uh, Gold Crest will be great too. Uh, if you have Gold Crest, well, you are happy about it, right? Uh, 
Uh, also, one of the most underrated artifacts for archers, which is Viola's Bow. I like this artifact because of the HP bonus, and I think HP bonus is perfect for archers. And of course, some um, uh, control around the battlefield is also great. Take a good attention towards Heart of Kamasi. Heart of Kamasi will, will get a lot of hype uh, because of the uh, physical keen and onslaught and like buffing each other. So like Heart of Kamasi is becoming to be meta. Um, Heart of Kamasi was one my one of my favorite artifacts using long range warfare with multiple legions, multiple archers, right? So if you are running Heart as one as a seasonal talent with long range warfare, you are running multiple archer hero pairs and buffing at least two nearby friendly legions will be amazing, right? And of course, physical attack bonus, normal attack damage bonus, what can be more good than this amazing skill which is buffing your two archers, right? That's another choice. And yeah, general, the offensive artifacts, which means main idea is to deal damage to skill, will have lower effect because it will be more of a normal attack uh, damage dealer's meta during the uh, long-range warfare. Also, it's important to prepare some warpets um, for that uh, gameplay, and I think um, people should already start um, leveling up their snow peak rocks, their night rocks, and their sand lizards, right? Uh, there is one uh, gameplay which you can have five sand lizard on five archer hero pair, but don't ha don't get intense stone aura, which is like healing only you have only stone aura which will be buffing each other like five uh, sand lizards are going to use five stone auras and they are going to heal uh, all archers at the same time which is another uh, meta another system on how you can play with warpets or maybe you're gonna have just offensive one uh, which is going to uh, heal uh, the one single archer hero pair so i think like sand lizards such as snow peak rocks and uh, mainly Nitrox and Sand Lizards. This is the top tier 1 um, uh, Warpets for Archers during the long range warfare. I think you guys should start working on these two. Uh, Nitrox is like purely normal attack crit and that becomes meta. And Sand Lizard is about like staying alive, deal more damage through normal attacks, especially through the um, like a chain strike synergy, right? It's important also to mention that warpits are really, really important um, during the gameplay of archers or any gameplay. It's not just a pet, it's, it's not cosmetic. It actually gives you a lot like during the fights, right? So like, I want to know how excited you are, guys. I'm really, really excited. I was waiting for something like this for a long time. Uh, like the day I heard long range warfare was going out and removed, uh, like next day i already wanted to have that skill for my archers because it means that next season will be amazing for me for my own fun uh, for my own gameplay and for the channel because i will be more excited during the pvp and i will be i will be playing with my archers as a tier one pvp group rather than mages which i was doing this season right uh, so all the archer players, it's, a, it's like a congratulations, finally we are getting what we love, uh, we're gonna have same range as a major players and we are going to crush them, because I don't care if we are going to have 5% less physical attack, which is gonna be 20% before it was 50, I still think that in terms of merits and in terms of impact, uh, we are going to have way way more both fronts, more merits and more impact, uh, during the battlefield that of course if you are tier 5 player if you are tier 5 archer good luck my friend you are going to have amazing amount of merits so i'm looking forward to season of tribe stripe part 2 it will happen in two maximum three weeks for my kvk and if you just find out this amazing news from here share your uh, opinions and share your personal views right as always guys, if you like the video, press like, subscribe, share, it always gives me more motivation when I see the interest from you guys. As always, I wish everybody amazing day, morning or night, wherever you are, we are going to see each other really really soon. Bye bye and good luck.